Welcome to our Facebook Live with In the Blue. I am Dr. Corey Frogley and uh, excited to be back with you after the holidays. It's hard to believe it's the holidays. They have passed us, come and gone, and it is the new year. And I'm sure most of you have already set your, your big, beautiful goals for the year. Um, and we're here to help you get things started up right. And as you know, Blue IQ is all about helping you with tools of scale, helping you achieve your visions, your goals, your main objectives, and we couldn't ask for a better guest to start our, our broadcast today because this guest is somebody who is an expert in team building. Uh, Joseph Stith has, has actually, and, and this is a little bit of a, a selfish shout out to the Blue IQ team, but Joseph Stith has joined the Blue IQ team and I can't tell you how excited we are to have him because he has, Years, 30 years of expertise in uh, consulting in the dental industry, the chiropractic industry, in vision. Uh, he has built hundreds and hundreds of teams. He has run his own teams. He worked uh, at Solution Reach for five years, building an amazing team there that just crushed their goals. Uh, he actually got headhunted and pulled into the Practice Dynamics family and consulted with them. and. And as you know, we've had, uh, you know, Lacey on the show, Bonnie and Lacey are just uh, killer, killer consultants. But uh, we're lucky enough now to have Joseph on the show and with the Blue IQ family. And he's going to share one of his most favorite topics. And that is really building this, uh, this unbelievable team because that's really what it's all about is, is you guys – building a team to help you achieve the vision that you have for your company. So Joseph, welcome to the show. We are so excited to have you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And, and it's truly an honor to be on the Blue IQ team. It really is. <laughs> it's exciting. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, shall we start? Let's we do this. shall. Let me just launch this. Uh, okay this presentation and here you go it's all yours all right this is a concept that i developed with the help of actually my first mentor uh by the name of gary piner is a hats off to him um who introduced me to, to leadership coaching uh 30 years ago in the in the medical field um no i i and think a, it's a important. lot has changed oh i think it's important for our our, our listeners to actually know joseph got to start in the military Right. Oh, and yeah, co I did. coming out of that, uh, with, with that background, you found this mentor that just changed yeah. your life. It's an incredible who, story. And who is a former Marine as well. So uh, uh, I, owe, I owe a great deal to that man. A great deal. Um, and in 30 years, a lot has changed. If you can imagine how much has changed in 30 years. I remember I'm so old. I remember pegboards and, and you don't even <laughs> remember that phase. Well, I, would have uh, I remember been 14 I'm, at the time. Uh, stop, stop. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember doctors asking the question. So should I get a computer? Should I do this? Oh my gosh! That's, oh my gosh! That's just how. That's just. I remember that whole phase. And then, adding to that now, what has changed? What has it changed? In spite of all of the uh, the, the 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 advances in technology, what hasn't changed is is the impact that management by measurement has on 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 motivating your team on on people and on productivity and that's why blue iq is so exciting for me because it's like i've gone from the stone age all the way to having data that is just so readily accessible uh to really really make a difference um so uh yeah, I, I think the beauty of this concept really is, is just that it's simple. And I, I love simple. I really love simple. The simple yeah. guy. Um, keep it simple, so with stupid. that, let's they keep it simple, stupid. So with that, let's go to the next slide. So the team let's compass suggests that everyone on your team is heading in one of four directions at any given time. Two are healthy and two are not healthy. Um, and so we're gonna use two variables to identify each direction. Uh, that first variable uh, describes a member of your team that's heading north, and that a northbound heading 
uh, uh, suggest that they are they are your superstars. They are who you build a practice with, and they have the skill that they need to do everything necessary without supervision, and they have what I refer to as a high care factor. Let me explain that. When I say high care factor, I mean they actually care about your practice and your patients as much as you do. And sometimes we don't even think that's possible, but it really is. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's driven ownership thinking. We refer to it today as ownership but, mentality. Yes, mm -hmm, exactly. They're 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 conscientious. They're they're driven. They they often put patients and other team members ahead of themselves because they're so team oriented. Um, those imagine imagine a member of your team that if you could replicate them. For your entire staff, it would be heaven on earth. That's <laughs> that's a northbound team member, and right. and, uh, and 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 maybe all of us are in some varying degrees of that on a good day, uh, but uh, but that's what describes the north. But let's before we go any further, Corey, I need to I need to maybe make a little disclaimer here because what it sounds like is that this is leading down a path as like a recipe for labeling. People, and and I'm not into that. I'm uh, we're we're that's not our intent, Corey. You know that. Sure. But um and 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 I, and I say that because this concept should never give someone license uh, to treat anyone other than the person that they are. I mean, if it's if it's a professional decision that they're not they're not right, or not the right fit, that can be done without destroying them or or you know demeaning them. We don't have to, yeah. you know, villainize them in order to, you know, make a change in the team. Um, and I know right. you're probably a great example of that. But you know, there are some pretty bad examples out there. Sure. Um, sure. Unfortunately, we've seen it all, right? Yeah. So, um, so having said that, um, that's what a northbound team member looks like. That's perfection. Now, let's go to the west. Those that are heading west also have just as high a care factor. They care just as much. They're hungry. They're driven. They'll do anything you ask them to do, but their skill set isn't there yet, and mm. probably no fault of their own. They may be new to the to the field, to the new to the industry, or especially new to your practice if they're a new hire. So at some point, yeah. everyone begins as a west, right? Sure. Everyone does. Yeah. Um, and so, but 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 the key is um, they're willing to learn. And and as you've you've heard, have you heard the consultants that talk about uh, this? May be this may predate you as well. But there was a time when consultants used to advocate poaching Nordstroms for for good people for your <laughs> for practice team members. Yeah, yeah because they yeah. really drilled culture and. They do. They pioneered a lot of that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because it's they, they've learned. We've all learned that it's 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 easier to teach technical skills to someone yep. who already has the professionalism and the hunger and the desire and and the people skills. Right. Um, that's what you really don't have time to train. Can people learn people skills? Absolutely. But maybe not fast enough to get a return on your investment because you need it right now. Right. Yeah. So, yep. so that's 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 the issue with with uh, you know with West. But here's the thing with with West is that West really never stays West. If they're truly West, it's temporary. They don't right. stay there. They're gonna they're yep. gonna end up moving Northwest and ultimately to the North because they're they're picking up skills. They've already got the drive and the and the people skills to pull it all together. And, and for our listeners, yeah, mm -hmm. for our listeners, if I can just interject for a second, just to kind of tie this together, is in Blue IQ, you're going to see that as you put a new person on the position, right, and the metric that's assigned to them, you're going to see their data go from probably red for a little while to yellow to green. And so it's the trajectory is in the correct direction if you're, if you're correct, you know, looking at this example, mm. because like what you said, you, you, Care factor is a higher, harder thing to teach, but it, but their skills they should be adopting that. And what have you seen, Joseph? What time frame should we expect for them to go from 
from that to where they're they're back north is it a mm. two week period is it a three mm. month period is that's it... a really good question because it depends on the skill level that you're demanding from that position it it, it, it depends on how technical the skill level is um, and and and, it, mm. and the metrics that you're talking about allows us to manage uh, the entire practice and every individual as a valuable resource I think I think it was Stephen R Covey that said um, that great, great leaders, great managers convert resources into results. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's what good technology can allow you to do, right? Um, yeah. In a, in a way we couldn't before because we just have more data. We'll be talking about more about that. So to answer your question, um, we'll, we're going we're gonna to explain that if, as long as you see growth, it depends on on a number of factors. You, there may not be anyone else available, and as long as they're continuing to grow from west to north, they're worth investing in. It's when they stop right. growing that you have to make some decisions. Um, and that, and that's, yeah, that's. See, and I love that point. And we've, we've talked about this in, in, with, with our, <clears throat> our viewers in the past, that it doesn't matter how long it takes to get them there as much as they get there and stay there. Uh -huh. it's, whether it's two weeks or three months, does it really matter as long as they get there and stay there? That's yeah, that's yeah. So, if you're but, making that but, point. but what if you what if you've actually hired the wrong person? I mean, yeah. at what point are you going to call that right? Because that's the next yeah. slide. It, it, why would anyone in their right mind hire someone that's heading south? You know, Be, that before has, we that, go into that, Joseph. Sure. sure. We just got to give a shout out to Lacey because Lacey's joined our uh, our show. Oh, nice. So she she said, "Howdy, boys!" I just want to say hi, Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. That's awesome. <clears throat> so yeah, um, sometimes we don't get what we thought we bought. Uh, sometimes we hire uh, a westbound imposter, you know yeah. that that looks like they're westbound. They walk and talk like a westbound, and then within a, just a couple days or weeks, we realize that uh, they may not be West after all because they don't have the care factor we thought they did and they clearly don't have the skills in order to increase their skills, which is, mm. which then it's a problem. And, and, and the reason that's important to identify early on, Corey, is that what I've seen over and over again is that we don't call it fast enough. Mm. And that's a problem for a number of reasons because because it's extremely taxing on those who are going north on your team. Yeah. Because they're, they're really paying the price. You may be as a doctor, you may feel it, but the staff is really feeling it because they're compensating for their, what they lack. And they that can only sense. do that so long. So um, and long, so if, yeah. if there's not a culture in the practice where the doctor uh, where the staff or the team can tell the doctor what they're experiencing and what they're seeing, um, then we take southbound individuals way too far down a path that yeah. we should have addressed sooner so that we could have protected our investment in time and money. Can I give an example of that? Yeah, yeah. Great. As many of our listeners know, I, I also have a clinic that we're we're running, have a phenomenal partner in that clinic that allows me to, to run Blue IQ while he's run the day-to-day -day operations there. But I'm still involved, obviously, in the, the executive level management of that. And we, we decided we needed to hire a new front desk team member, front office team member, and, uh, you know, put out our fillers, put out our ads, had lots of applications. We found somebody who was um, coming back into the workforce, right? She had been a mother kids are a little bit older, and an amazing um, background, mm -hmm. interviewed, um, office manager interviewed her, office manager came and reported and said, our office lead said, wow, we have found somebody who has incredible capacity to, mm -hmm. to do this team. And, and as many of you guys know, that, that front desk team leader is, is so vital and in such an important role. So, uh, she did a working interview. We took her through our normal processes. She she passed everything. I do the culture training for that side of the company, so I, I got to spend a few hours with her. Um, she did well. She didn't. Uh, there was something slightly off, but it, but I just figured you know she's coming back in the workforce, right? Yep. Went ahead and moved her on to the next training process. Well, 
two weeks now of technical training with the, the office lead. The office lead reports back to us and says, <clears throat> I'm nervous. She's not picking up things as fast. Mm. And w during in between, you know, addressing patients, she doesn't, she doesn't have that high tone, that pop, that engagement with the, with the patients that are right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she's been trained well enough and she's, she's just a phenomenal office lead to recognize yeah. very early. Now, it, it, going along with what you just shared, was this just more time? Was this, did, did we, you know, how far down the path do you go with that person? It's well, it, yeah, that's a good the question. office lead. Th this is what she did. The office lead sat down with her knee to knee and just had a very frank conversation. Here's what we're noticing. You're not your, your energetic energy that you had when you interviewed with us is gone. It's where is it? What's happened? And she shared some things that this position just wasn't quite what I expected. I've had some turns in my life. I'm actually going through a divorce. There were some things happening in her personal mm -hmm. life that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, now that, now, but because that the office lead was able to just have that conversation with her, she yeah. was able to say, maybe this isn't the right job for me. Yeah. And it yeah. was her leaving the team rather than us having to just let her go because oh, the office wow. lead was so good at having that knee to knee conversation with her what two weeks into the example. position rather than three mm -hmm. months into the position. Mm -hmm. I could not have given you a better example, Corey. That, that's the not only the reason it needs to be identified soon with, with continued communication about what's working and what's not, instead of waiting until 90 days down the road because that's their probationary period or whatever, right, <laughs> you're, right. you're committed by then, it feels, you know. <laughs> right. but, it, but, but that's a great example of how it was handled. And with a human-to-human -human connection, you were able to determine that it wasn't the right fit. And, yeah. and you didn't keep forcing a square peg down that, you know, that, that, that round hole uh, uh, at the expense of the people that were being honest in, in telling you it probably wasn't a good fit. Thank yeah. you. That's really good. Thank you. So, um, uh, we've hinted on um, the fact that, that any training is often done by those heading north. So, so into the next slide, Corey, uh, someone heading east has the skills. That's not the problem. The problem mm -hmm. is, is they don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. And that and that is it possible to hire someone that's like eastbound out of the gate? Yes, we, it's it's been done uh, because they they look on the resume, they look sparkling, like oh, if I could just get them on my team, my problems would be over. Um, mm -hmm. But they're not team oriented, and they're generally in it for themselves, and they feel like they're doing you a great big favor by even saying yes to the offer, and 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 they just. They're, they become like a, they can be a, a kind of a prima donna mentality where it's really all about them. And, uh, and, that, and that, that can be possible. However, what's really more indicative of what we're talking about here is, is the painful reality that sometimes we have a northbound who slips east. Mm. And why would they do that? Yes. They, set, they slip east for the same reasons that all of us would slip east. It's because there's no recognition. It's mm -hmm. because after day after day, sometimes year after year, they give everything they've got and no one recognizes them for what they do. And they learn that caring isn't worth it. And they start to slip east. Right. And, and that's not just in, that's not, that's not uh, something that's uh, unique to healthcare. Uh, that's that's in business in general. Uh, that's that's it's an epidemic uh, where over time you may care about your job and you may care about you may care about your customers, but when you stop caring about the company because there's no recognition, um, your best people begin to slip east, and you won't keep them much longer once they actually go all the way to east because because there are better opportunities for everybody if they do. What, what are some signs for our, our, our audience 
of a person slipping east in the earlier stages so they can catch that before they go full full east. Wow. That that becomes the essence of so much consulting today because it's a blind spot. They just they just don't see it. The doctor mm -hmm. wants to believe that he has this great rapport with his team and everybody knows what to do and he and he often or she doesn't often want to recognize that 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 the, the that the rapport isn't what they think it is. And they're not using metrics to empower people to, to, to have a voice. Uh, mm -hmm. And so when no one's talking and no one's sharing, you know, how well they're doing or there's no excitement in someone's career or position because everyone is celebrating their wins, you have a culture that's moving east. Mm -hmm. Does that help? I think that's a, that's a phenomenal point of why it's so important to, to interact with the data because the data then again helps you I, just get on a regular rhythm of, of right. celebrating and acknowledging. Here, here's an interesting question. I'm throwing this at you kind of blindly, uh, Joseph, because we didn't talk about this earlier, but it, this really makes me think, what if the business owner is the one that because of just fatigue and burnout, they've turned east? What do you Happens. give our audience? What suggestion do you give our audience for that? It's a, it's a joke in consulting that sometimes we wish we could just fire the doctor. Um, <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah. And, and you can't do that all the time uh, because, it's, because they can lose momentum just as easily as a team member when they've lost the purpose in why they're doing what they're doing. I love the whole getting involved with your why. I love Simon Sinek. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if the doctor has lost that kind of passion to the which the, the staff is, is, is the driving force and the doctor's just showing up, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's taxing on a northbound team player beyond yeah. anything else. I mean, they can handle yeah. uh, a southbound or a westbound team member. Uh, they can even handle, sometimes they can handle an eastbound uh, team member uh, because, you know, they understand, they've got the history, unless they're like super, super, dis, you know, disrespectful and, and uh, uh, but, but handling a doctor that's not north? Mm, mm. I'd rather have a doctor that's west and knows he's west than one yeah. that's, heading, <laughs> that's heading east. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I agree with the you. problem. So, so next slide, let's tie it all together, Corey. Um, okay. If you've been in practice more than a year, you can relate to the fact that it's probably like 80% of your management headaches are coming from those who are either heading south or slipping east, if you're, if you're aware of it like you should be. But, but mm -hmm. if you're not careful, uh, doctors easily fill the role of, if I'm not seeing patients, I'm putting out fires. Uh, because that's, they, they think that's their job as a manager. You, there should be no fires to put out. There sh everyone should know exactly what's expected of them, and everyone should know whether they're winning or losing even before you do, um, mm. uh, because that's, that's the power of, of the metrics we're talking about, like Blue IQ. And so, so uh, when you think of the compass itself, uh, your focus should be where you're, where you're getting your greatest return. That's where your, the bulk of your time and attention should be spent. It should be spent on those who are west and north. But often they're neglected because we're so busy handling the headaches mm -hmm. of the southbounders we should have let go by now or the yeah. eastbounders that we should have rewarded better and treated better so that they you know, stay connected with their purpose in what we're doing. Um, and that, that's why this is such a power powerful perspective because it changes your perspective. As a manager, you change the way you think about how you spend your time. And time is the greatest resource you have besides what you were trained to do as a doctor, right? Yep. So um, that's how you maximize very, your very limited time. A doctor only has two hands and how well he manages his schedule and his team to maximize the time of those hands has yes. everything to do with how product, productive and profitable a practice will be. 
and how yeah. happy they'll be and how, how, how they can retain talent uh, because, because everyone's moving in the same direction. Would that everyone was always moving north all the time. That's <laughs> probably nice. not very realistic. <clears throat> and on a very simple level, we can talk about how, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. But for the most part, we all range somewhere between west and north. And sometimes we have to deal with people, even ourselves, that slip, that slip east because we're not looking where we should be. Um, so here's a, challenge, here's a challenge for our audience today. If you're the business owner, I want you to sit down and, and list out each member of your team. And then I want you simply to put a letter or letters mm. next to each one of their names. I want you to think through it. Are they northbound? Are they northwest? Are they west-south? Are they southbound? Are they east? Identify that. And if you're a team member listening to this presentation, I want you to put your name down. And I want you to physically write down your letters and then list why. Why are you those letters? Because that's the only way we're going to change this. And that's what Blue IQ is all about, is helping you find your true north. And as Joseph has shared with us, doctors only have two hands, unless you have Blue IQ. Then you have eight. <laughs> then you have eight. Now we that's understand what we're the, all about, that's baby. what the octopus is all about. <laughs> I love it. What it's all about. So tools tools of scale. True. Yep. I love it. So I love it, Joseph. Any closing remarks to share with us? You know, uh, yeah. I, I think what's what's uh, the the greatest travesty is that is that we have uh, opportunities to celebrate every day that we're missing, and we're and, and and as we miss those, we miss opportunities to motivate our staff and to stay connected to our purpose and to be there for our patients, to really be present. And, and, and that's because we're not utilizing the technology that we should have. Because just as you said, as a, as a, a member of that team assesses the team, that right there is using a, met, a, a metric. They're using a metric to scale, to, to evaluate where they are and where others are versus where they should be. And the more often we can know that fact, the more productive and profitable we are as a practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Love you, Corey. It. Beautiful. Joseph, thank you for joining us uh, again. We are here every Friday, 9 uh, a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. We are all about digestible data. This is hopefully a presentation that you've enjoyed. You've been able to listen to it just over your morning cup of coffee or brunch or, or whatever you're doing in between patients. Uh, three pillars of Blue IQ. It is major, it is tools IQ to improve performance. And then that third pillar is, is what Joseph has touched on, is that reward, that celebration. When they're in the green, when they're in the blue, that's what Blue IQ is all about, is identifying which team and team members are in those those uh, levels of performance. and and that helps you celebrate the right team individuals and create this culture of helping the team all begin to turn north. Joseph, thank you again for joining us today. It's been a My fun, pleasure. fun presentation. My pleasure. And, let's uh, do this again. <laughs> let's do it again. Thank you, Sarah, and to our audience, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week.